Whittier Community Theater presents The Maltese Falcon, featuring one of literature's most iconic private eyes. This radio adaptation remains faithful to Dashiell Hammett's 1930 novel, as well as John Huston's 1941 film noir masterpiece. So come in from the rain-slit streets, take off your fedora, and light up another cigarette as you listen to what unfolds. My name is Spade, Sam Spade. License number 357896, issued by the Police Department of San Francisco. Occupation, private detective, sometimes known as private eye. My files in the case of the Maltese Falcon are closed, but I've got the Maltese Falcon. I've got it, and some dough. My partner got murdered and a very slick chick went up for life. I'll tell you about it. This slick dame comes to see me one day gives me a song and dance about her sister and a guy called Floyd Thursby. She wants us to get her sister back before her mother and father get back from Hawaii. I put my partner, Miles Archer, on the case. That night, he gets murdered, and so does this guy, Thursby. I go round to the apartment where the dame is living, the one called Bridget O'Shaughnessy. Huh, <laughs> she had something I seemed to go for. Oh, uh, Mr. Spade, come in. I have come in. Uh, Yes, so you have. Mr. Spade, tell me, am I to blame for last night? You warned us that Thursby was dangerous. Of course, you lied to us about your sister and all that, but that doesn't count. We didn't believe you. Oh, help me, Mr. Spade. I, I need help so badly. I've no right to ask you, but I do ask you. Help me. (laughs) <laughs> you won't need much of anybody's help. You're good. You're awful good. It's chiefly your eyes, I think, and that throb you get in your voice when you say things like, Help me, Mr. Spade. I deserve that. But oh, the lie was in the way I said it, and not at all in what I said. If I'm gonna help you, I've gotta have some sort of a line on your Floyd Thursby. I met him in the Orient. We came here from Hong Kong last week. Did he kill Archer? Yes, certainly. Picked a nice sort of playmate. Only that sort could have helped me if... if he had been loyal. How bad a hole are you actually in? As bad as could be. Physical danger? I'm not heroic. I don't think there's anything worse than death. Then it's that? It's that, as surely as we're sitting here. Unless you help me. Who killed Thursby? Your enemies or his? I don't know. His, I suppose. I'm afraid I don't know. Who are these enemies? Well, there's a small, dark man with white teeth and a smooth, dangerous, fat man. Oh, this is hopeless. Well, how much money have you got? I have about $500 left. Give it to me. There's only 400 here. I had to keep some to live on. Okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. You needn't come to the door with me. I can let myself out. I went by the office then and found a dark little guy with very white teeth waiting for me. His name was Joel Cairo. He was a Greek. Mr. Spade, I am trying to recover an an ornament that has been, shall we say, (laughs) mislaid, yes? And I thought and hoped you could assist me. Uh Uh-huh. The ornament is a statuette, the black figure of a bird. I am prepared to pay the sum of $5,000 for its recovery, and no questions asked. Five thousand's a lot of money. It's a very interesting figure. You will put your hands together. Back of your neck, Mr. Spade. Huh? Oh, sure. I shall shoot you if you try to stop me, Mr. Spade, but I must search your office. Oh, you won't find anything but a pair of worn-out rubbers, a half pint of rum, and a pack of chewing gum. We shall see. Please, stand up. Over there. Sure. This way. Uh, No, the the other way. Sure. (coughs) Oh! Oh, oh, oh. I'll take the gun, Mr. Cairo. Now get up. I, I, I am very slow at 
things like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I am still prepared to pay $5,000 for the return of the figure. Do you have it, Mr. Spade? No. Uh, well, if it is not here, wh why did you just get a serious injury to prevent me from searching for it? Well, I should sit around and let people come in and stick me up. You, you wish some assurance of my sincerity. A, a retainer? I might. Uh, say, uh... One hundred dollars? Ah, yeah. Better make it two hundred. Thanks. Your first guess was that I had the bird. What's your second guess? Well, that you know where it is, or, or where you can get it. You're not hiring me to murder or do burglary, but to get back the figure in some lawful way? Say, from a dame with red hair? Or a smooth, dangerous fat man? Oh, so you know. You must beware of them. They would stop at nothing. May, uh, may I have my pistol now? Hmm? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd forgotten it. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, Mr. Spade, you will kindly clasp your hands behind your neck? What the? <laughs> don't, m no, don't move, Mr. Spade. This time, I might shoot. I insist on searching your office. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Go ahead. I finally got rid of the Greek and started back for Bridget O'Shaughnessy's apartment. Matter of fact, I had a hunch that the Greek was going there himself and started to tail his cab when a sad-faced guy poked something into my back and said, Come on. The fat man wants to see you. Here he is, Mr. Gutman. The guy who was talking to the dame and the Greek. Ah, Mr. Spade. Mr. Gutman. We begin well, sir. I distrust a man who talks too much. I like to talk. Of course, talking something you can't do judiciously unless you keep in practice. Yeah. Now, sir, we'll talk if you like. And I'll tell you right out that I'm a man who likes talking to a man who likes to talk. Well, swell. Will we talk about the blackbird? No, oh, you're the man for me, sir. No beating about the bush, right to the point. Let us talk about the blackbird, by all means. Mr. Spade, have you any conception of how much money can be got for that blackbird? No. Well, sir, if I told you, if I told you half, you'd call me a liar. <laughs> no, no. Not even if I thought so. But you just tell me what it is, and I'll figure out the profits. You mean, you don't know what that bird is? Well, I know what it's supposed to look like. I know the value in human life you people put on it. Miss O'Shaughnessy didn't tell you what it is? And Cairo didn't either? He offered me 10000 for it. 10000 <laughs> And dollars, mind you, not even pounds. Oh, they must know what it is. Or do they? What is your impression? I can't tell. They're both lying. Well, if they don't know, I'm the only one in the whole wide, sweet world who does. And swell. When you've told me, that'll make two of us. Mathematically correct, sir. But I don't know for certain that I'm going to tell you. Oh, don't be foolish. You know what it is, and I know where it is. That's why I'm here. Well, sir, where is it? <laughs> Don't be silly. You see, I must tell you what I know, but you will not tell me what you know. That is hardly equitable, sir. No, no, I don't think we can do business along those lines. Yeah? Well, think again and think fast. I can get along without you. And keep that gunsel away from me while you're making up your mind. I'll kill him. Well, sir, I must say you have a most violent temper. Well? What are you wasting time for? You've got till 5.30, then you're either in or out for keeps. Three characters and a blackbird. Well, all I knew was my partner was dead, and the cops were getting very uncooperative about the whole thing, including who killed Floyd Thursby. I thought I'd better get back to see that O'Shaughnessy dame before it was too late. And sure enough, it almost was. They came here and took him away. Took who away? Who? The police. They... They wanted to talk to you, too. They took Mr. Cairo with them. What was he doing here? Uh, he came to talk about the bird. Hey, what is this bird, this falcon that everybody's all steamed up about? Suppose I wouldn't tell you anything at all about it. What would you do? Something wild and unpredictable? Maybe. Well, it's a black figure. As you know, smooth and shiny, of a bird, a hawk, or a falcon, about 12 inches high. Well, what makes it so important? I don't know. They wouldn't tell me. But they promised me 500 pounds if I helped them get it from the man who had it. Go ahead. 
They promised me 500 pounds to help them, and I did. Then we found that Joel Cairo was going to take the Falcon and desert Floyd and me, so we did that to Joel first. Huh. You are a liar. I am a liar. I've always been a liar. <laughs> well, don't brag about it. Is there any truth at all in that yarn? Some. Not very much. Well, we've got plenty of time. I'll put some coffee on and we'll try again. Oh, I'm so tired. So tired of lying and thinking up lies and not knowing what is a lie and what is the truth. Oh, darling, don't stare at me like that. Come closer, darling. It is something to do while waiting. Why not? Kiss me, Sam Spade. Kiss me. Why not? Ah, it happens every time. I'll get it. Be careful, darling. Okay, come on, you. He wants to see you. Well, if it isn't the fat man's killer. Hello, pale face. How many did you bump off today? Shut up. Gutman's waiting for you. No kidding. What kept you? Darling, what does he want? He wants me. The fat man's been thinking things over. Well, Mr. Spade, I must apologize for sending for you in this fashion. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's talk about the bird. All right, let's. What do you know of the Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem? Mm, crusaders or something, weren't they? Very good. In 1539, these crusading knights persuaded Emperor Charles V to give them the island of Malta. He made but one condition. They were to pay him each year the tribute of a falcon, in acknowledgment that Malta was still under Spain. Do you follow me? Yeah. Have you any conception of the extreme, immeasurable wealth of the order of that time? Well, I imagine they were pretty well fixed. They were rolling in wealth, sir. They hit upon the happy thought of sending the emperor for the first year's tribute, not an insignificant live bird, but a glorious golden falcon, encrusted from head to foot with the finest jewels in their coffers. Allow me to replenish your drink, sir. Well, what do you think of these knights? I don't know. Well, sir, the glorious falcon never reached Spain. Buccaneers raided the galleon. In 1713, the bird showed up in Sicily, in 1840, in Paris. And it had by that time acquired a coat of black enamel, looking like nothing but a fairly interesting black statue. In 1923, a Greek dealer found it in an obscure Paris shop. He knew what it was. I heard about it in London and rushed over to buy it. But the Greek was murdered and the falcon gone. That was 23 years ago. For 23 years, I've searched for the bird. I traced it to the home of a Russian general, Kemidov, but he wouldn't sell, even though he knew nothing of its value. I was forced to send my agents after it. They got it, sir. But I haven't got it. But I'm going to get it, sir. Um, how soon can you, uh... How soon are you willing to produce the falcon? Uh, a couple of days... That is satisfactory. Well, sir, here's a fair bargain and profits large enough for both of us. What's your idea of a fair bargain? Shall I say 100,000? Why not? What do you say to quarter of a million? Oh, then you think the dingus is worth a million, huh? Why not? Yeah, why not? Say, I, uh, I feel kind of funny, Gutman. That drink. My dear man, how could you suggest anything so crude? I, uh, I, uh... <laughs> Wilma. Wilma! Yeah! The drink got him, huh? Put your guns away, Wilma. You must learn to be subtle in these things, like me. Out like a light, huh? Well, I owe him something, the louse. He thinks he's tough. Let's see if he can take this. That's enough, Wilma. You've kicked him enough. It'd never do to kill him here. Besides, Wilma, you know how I hate the sight of blood. I guess the name of Sam Spade was a cinch for the back page obituaries. But I came out of it somehow and managed to get up and stagger out of that apartment. I went around to the hotel where Joel Cairo had a room and made a deal with the house dick to let me search it. 
All I could find was a newspaper in the wastebasket folded back to the steamship news. There was a list of arrivals, and one was marked. It said 8-7 a.m., the La Paloma from Hong Kong. That was good enough for me. I got a cab and rode to the docks. The La Paloma was on fire and burning beautifully. I went back to my office to hold my aching head and think things over when the door opened. And a tall guy in a long black overcoat stood there with a package in his hands, making gurgling noises before he fell like a tree. He should have. He was dead. I took a good look at him. He was a mate off the La Paloma. I unwrapped his package and there it was. The Black Bird. The Maltese Falcon. I grabbed the phone and listened. It was Bridget O'Shaughnessy, and she said she was in trouble. I found her shivering in the dark corner of an office building, and I took her and the Falcon home to my apartment. I put her on the couch and put the Falcon in the icebox, where no one would think to look for anything, including ice. I came back in and switched on the lights, and found a surprise party waiting to greet me. Well, sir, we're all here. Now let's sit down and be comfortable and talk. Sure. Get away from me, Gunsel! You're not gonna frisk me! Stand still. Shut up! Put your paw on me and I'm gonna make you use that gun. Ask your boss if he wants me shot up before we talk. Never mind, Wilma. You're certainly a most headstrong individual, Mr. Spade. Well, let's be seated. You too, Cairo. You can put down your gun too. Of course, Mr. Spade. I was only using caution, as it were. You ready, Gutman? You ready to make the first payment and take the Falcon off my hands? Well, sir, as to that, here are $10,000, sir. Oh? We were talking about more money than this. Yes, sir, we were. But this is genuine coin of the realm, sir. With a dollar of this, you can buy $10 of talk. And besides, there are more of us to be taken care of now. Well, that may be, but I've got the Falcon. I should not think it would be necessary to remind you, Mr. Spade, that though you may have the Falcon, <laughs> we certainly have you. Yes, I'm trying not to let that worry me. We'll come to the money later. There's another thing to be taken care of first. We've got to have a fall guy. The police have to have a victim, somebody they can stick for those three murders. Two. Only two murders, Mr. Spade. Thursby undoubtedly killed your partner. All right. Two. What difference does it make? The point is we've got to give the police... Oh, come, come, Mr. Spade. You can't expect us to believe at this late date you are the least afraid of the police. Or that you're not able to handle... I'm up to my neck, Gutman. I've got to come through with somebody, a victim, when the time comes. If I don't, I'll be it. Well, let's give him the gunsel. He actually did shoot Thursby and the other one, didn't he? Anyway, he's made to order for the part. Let's turn him over to the cops. Get up on your feet. I've taken all the writing from you I'm gonna take. Get up! Shoot it out! Now, now, Wilma, don't shoot. <clears throat> there. There, Gunsel, that'll take care of you. Put him on the sofa. Sorry, Bridget, but you seem to have recovered. I'm... I'm all right. Good. Well... Gentlemen, there's our fall guy. And now, gentlemen, you agree. Or I'll turn the Falcon and the whole lot of you in. Mr. Spade, I don't like this. What if we, uh, took matters into our own hands and killed you? You won't, or you'll never find the Falcon. True, but there are other ways. We could make you talk. No, I'd take it and make you kill me, and then you'd end up in the same way. <laughs> I believe you would, too. Well? Well, I've always felt towards Wilma like a father, but uh, you can have him. Swell. Let's get the details fixed. Why did he shoot Thursby? Thursby was Miss O'Shaughnessy's ally. We thought in disposing of him, we would teach Miss O'Shaughnessy to patch up her differences with us regarding the Falcon. And the mate from the La Paloma? Oh, that was Miss O'Shaughnessy's fault. <gasps> Cairo got in touch with me when he saw the notice of the ship's arrival. He remembered that the mate and Miss O'Shaughnessy had been friendly in Hong Kong. He called on this man, but he, with Miss O'Shaughnessy and the bird, slipped through our fingers. We followed them to her apartment, and Wilma shot the mate as he was coming down the fire escape. He shot him many times, but the man was tough, and he did not drop the falcon. We, um, persuaded Miss O'Shaughnessy to call your office. 
but unfortunately she did not call in time to prevent you from meeting the mate and getting the falcon. I see. And now, sir, uh, would it be presumptuous if we asked to see the falcon? Okay. It's in my icebox. Icebox? I say! <laughs> you are a character, sir. Yes, very, very clever of you. Very. I've got it. I've got it. Bring it in here at once. Here, wrapped in this. Now, after 23 years. Oh, it is it. But we'll make sure. Hand me a knife, sir. Here. I'll peel off some of this disfiguring enamel. It's... It's a fake. (gasps) All right, O'Shaughnessy, you've had your little joke. Now tell us about it. No, Sam, no. That's the one I got from the Russian, I swear. You you bungled it, Cutman. You're in your stupid attempt to buy it. The Russian caught on on how valuable it was. No wonder we had so little trouble stealing it. Oh, you imbecile. Oh, you bloated idiot. Yes, (laughs) this is the Russian's hand. There's no doubt of it. Well, sir, what do you suggest? Shall we stand here and shed tears and call each other names? Or shall we go to Istanbul and... uh, Interview our Russian friend. Go to Istanbul? For 23 years I've wanted that little item and have been trying to get it. If I must spend another year on the quest, well, that will be an added expenditure in time only. I'll go with you. Uh, (gasps) Wilmer's gone. Wilmer's gone? Oh, so he has. Well, that makes it imperative that we go too. And by the way, Mr. Spade, I'll trouble you for my envelope containing the $10,000. I kept my end of the bargain, but I'll settle for a thousand for expenses. Thank you. I'll allow you the thousand. That'll take care of my time. Now, sir, we'll say goodbye to you. Unless you care to undertake the Istanbul expedition with us. You don't? That's too bad. Well, sir, the shortest farewells are best. Adieu. And to you, Miss O'Shaughnessy, I leave the rara avis there on the table as a little memento. (laughs) The Maltese Falcon. (laughs) All right, O'Shaughnessy. Talk. Where shall I begin? You came to me and asked me to have Thursby followed. I put my partner on it. He followed Thursby. He was killed. You must have told Thursby he was being followed. I told him, yes, but please believe me, Sam. I wouldn't have told him if I thought Floyd Thursby would kill your partner. Miles hadn't many brains, but he'd had too many years' experience as a detective to be caught like that by a man he was shadowing up a blind alley with his gun tucked away in his hip and his overcoat buttoned. But he'd have gone up there with you, Angel. (laughs) He was just dumb enough for that. And then you could have stood as close to him in the dark as you liked and put a bullet through him. Don't. Don't talk to me like that, Sam. You know I didn't know. Stop it! Why did you shoot him? I didn't mean to at first. I, I can't look at you and tell you this, Sam. You thought Thursby would tackle him. If he got Thursby, then you were rid of him. If Thursby won, you had something on him. Enough to be rid of him for good, wasn't that it? (laughs) Something like that. But when Thursby backed down, you took the gun and did the job yourself. Oh, Sam, sweetheart, from the very first instant I saw you, I knew... You angel. Well, if you get a good break, you'll be out of San Quentin in 20 years, and you can come back to me then. I hope they don't hang you, precious, by that sweet neck. You know deep down in your heart that in spite of anything I've done, I love you. I don't care who loves who. I'm not going to play the sap for you. I won't walk in Thursby's and I don't know how many others' footsteps. You killed my partner and you're going over for it. Why must you do this to me, Sam? Surely your partner wasn't as much to you as... Listen! Listen to me! This won't do any good. You'll never understand me, but I'll try once and then give it up. Listen. When a man's partner is killed, he's supposed to do something about it. And it happens we're in the detective business. Well, when one of your organization gets killed, it's bad business to let the killer get away with it. Bad all around. Bad for every detective everywhere. You can't send me to the... Sam! You can't! You love me! You love me! Maybe I do. What of it? Maybe next month I won't. 
I've been through it before. I'll have some rotten nights after I've sent you over, but that'll pass. I want you, sure. But I won't take you at the price because... Because all of me wants to, regardless of the consequences. And because you counted on that with me. The same as you counted on that with all the others. Oh, Sam. Darling, kiss me. Kiss me. Sure. Sure, baby. What are you doing? Who are you calling? The cops, baby. The cops to come and take you away. Whittier Community Theater has brought you The Maltese Falcon. Based on Dashiell Hammett's influential 1930 detective novel and John Huston's 1941 film noir masterpiece. This adaptation was written for radio by Frank Wilson and originally broadcast in 1946. This latest production was directed by Phil Brickey and features the voice talents of Rachel Kent Patton, Jill Carey Martin, Guy Van Impel, Stephen Biggs, and Brian Yeager. I'm your announcer, Peter Miller. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to like and subscribe.